Did he come out as an anti-Semite? Is that why he's like gone? Didn't he do something? You know, Mariah Cara? Carrie? She's suing me. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to our series Best Motion Picture 2011. I'm Anna. And I'm Maddie. And today we watched, well, Tree of Life. Yeah. And we have also watched Melancholia. Two movies, all right. <laughs> they're, they're, they're films, all right. They, they, they are there. This is a, a normal episode that we're gonna do slightly differently because these are two existential experimental art films. We're gonna do our normal questions backwards. So which one would you like to start with? Uh, we watched Melancholia first. Man's Family Disclosures for Melancholia? No. 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 I wouldn't be surprised if someone didn't understand this movie, but I think that had nothing to do with like prior knowledge or understanding of it. Exactly that. Marginalized person. <laughs> um, a one. Yeah. <laughs> there was nobody who wasn't white. Not a single person. And like the whole first half, there were many people in every shot. Not a single person wasn't white. Yeah. So that's bad. Also, no gay no. things. No, nothing like that at all. Maybe this is some marginalized persons. Apparently this film is like about depression. So mm. people with men who struggle with mental health. I googled after watching to see if I could comprehend anything better. Melancholia, the best film about depression? And I was like, I don't think so. I battled some pretty deep slumps, if you will, at times. It, it felt like nothing was ungrayifying. And nothing was like to the level of sister needs to disrobe me and make me take a bath. I can't open my eyes for it. Oh man, is that a train rumbling through? I was gonna say that's a train, yeah. It could be a quick one and it could be a long one. I feel like this can't be the best. No, I mean like maybe Even the Bab the Babadook is better. That's true. Also, the marginalized person saying uh LVT, he like made th some like really ridiculous Nazi sympathizing like jokes and comments at Cannes when this premiered. Things where it's like, he's like known to not be PC. And I'm like, here in 2020, when we put all these things, 2020, here in 2022, when we put all these things, oh, they keep making these comments and oh, they said this and oh, they make this joke. We, we, we put those things together and we realize that person's a white supremacist or an asshole or both. Probably both. So like, no, I don't really think I respect this man. I mean, it's still going, but it's pretty soft. I think it'll be okay. It did not end up being okay. So today, relevance? I'm gonna give another whopping Uno. I oh. mean, who the fuck is talking about this? People who like really think that they love cinema more than everyone else. Like... <laughs> People who love cinema more than everyone else. Yeah. Yeah, because they're like, this is on like several lists of like, best movies of the decade, blah, blah. And I'm like, but what about it was good? How is this on a best films of the decade list? What also, what decade? The past one. The, the tens? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, the, whoever made that list is wrong and literally crawled out of hell. It, uh, there's like, I don't even know what else is on the list, but there's no way this is one of the best movies of the last Decade. No, I, I When the agree. whole year of 2015 films exist. Right, right. Um, how are you like, this is, this is a perfect piece of art? Yeah. What gripped you, bitch? I'm, mm, no, I'm done. Don't give me a two, because somebody still thinks it's relevant, but not me. They're wrong. Back in 2011, I'll give the relevancy a three, it was fair released a can and people said because of uh, LVT's gaffes in the press conferences, that's what caused it to lose the Palme d'Or. Kirsten won Best Actress at, at Cannes and it was like limited release through Europe first and that was like in May, slowly throughout the year and it did not limited release in the US until November. And um, I'm not gonna try, I'm just gonna let it go. Okay. The budget was nine million, and it ended up making a little less than twenty million with that limited release. So I'll say, yeah, for for a limited release, it did pretty pretty well, and people heard about it. I did know of this movie, and um, I knew one scene from this movie, not from like it being shared on the internet, but from like 
seeing it on HBO at home. It was it's the scene where she's like nude. Coincidentally, when I was like, "What is this movie?" at home, and that was like literally the scene I turned it on to, and I was like, "I don't think this movie's for me today." I mean, I don't know what year Atonement came out, mm -hmm. but I think I confuse the titles of these movies. I don't know why it was relevant. It was around. Yeah, and yeah. it was a buzz. Mm -hmm. thing. Was this nominated for any Academy Awards? No. Honestly, good. The Academy was right? The art. The art. The art now. The performances and the visuals, not the cinematography though. I'd like to exclude cinematography when I give this a four. Okay. The cinematography for the Justine part was like if an episode of Succession was terrible. It was unbearable to watch. I got such a headache. It was so bad. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I honestly, I'll give it a fair. I'll give it a three for mm -hmm. art. I was fine with the shaky cam, although it was, like, very excessive, I'll say. The costumings and some of the stylings, like, who the sister was, I felt like was very clear from her appearance. Mm -hmm. When it was her part for the story, I was like, okay. The whole second half, all of Claire was like, it was like, it was like two different writers wrote them. Yeah. I, the, the, I, that story. That's that story. I was like, I mean, the performances were fine. I loved Kirsten in this. Kiefer was good. Mm -hmm. Kiefer did fine in this. Mm -hmm. The little boy was fine. I mean, John Hurt was like a kooky old man. That was funny. It was good performances. Good performances. Let's move on to the art. Or the art or the story. Cause that's what we really want to talk about. Yeah, God. Um bad. I knew the story was there. It was a one. It was a one. I think that's the first time we've given one to story. I mean I'd probably give it to like Clash. Or you something. did. You gave ones across the board to Clash the Titans. That's true. And this yeah. only did a little bit better. Oh my god, it was unbearable. And not in a cool, artsy, oh, I want to make the audience uncomfortable way, which is apparently what LVT likes to do. But like, fuck you. You suck. Nazi. Kind of like how you said just a moment ago that this seemed like it was written by different people. I have no freaking idea why these stories needed to be connected or told. Like, I literally, part one has nothing to do with part two. And no. part two is a better more gripping story of oh my gosh is this planet gonna crash into earth and there's this she, claire has anxiety about it and her boy isn't gonna grow up and then Kiefer was such a dickhead at the oh end to just god. kill himself with yes. pills i was like oh my god you coward you bitch part one part one was so goddamn confusing why did she go and fuck tim the nephew of of stellan on her wedding night instead of the guy she literally left her new brand new husband probably hard and she went out into the golf course and fucked this guy the golf course she freshly pissed on unless we forget that's when that right. was the first time i was like what are we gonna see in this oh my god when he was gonna give her the apple orchard so cute and she was like bye bitch <laughs> so like that confused me because i felt like that we didn't have enough backstory of mm -hmm. what their relationship was like. Like, again, okay, she is, like, massively struggling with depression, I guess. Him being like, I found our plot of land. I was like, is it, wh why would you think that that would make her happy? Because I was like, if RJ was like, guess what? I bought a farm. I'd be like, what is wrong with you? Don't, please stop <laughs> doing this to me. Please stop. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't go leave him and fuck somebody else, like, two minutes later. It, also, I'm like, she just pushed him down and got on top of him. Yeah, there's a lot of hopping. There was, there was a lot of hopping in that there scene. There was not express consent, so I was like, what? But then the guy later was like, we had good sex. I, like, didn't know if it was real that they had fucked in the sand pit or not. And then at the end when he was like, but we had good sex, let's get married. I was like, was this a short story written in another language that then was translated into English and made into a film in two parts that had nothing to do with each other? Because that would make sense, unlike the movie. Like, what did the planet... Is it just that she saw the planet on the wedding day? Maybe. But, like, so fucking what? So what? Yeah. I thought that maybe, when you told me it was going to be in two parts, that maybe it was, like, 
the perspective of the wedding day from her point of view and then her sister's point of view because her sister was like holy shit you're making this day so so much tougher so much more miserable blah 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 and then you think your sis her sister's a huge bitch and then it actually is like no she's the bitch and yes and then boom a planet fucking hits them and they all get nuked that's what i was hoping for that like, bitch same Whenever I finished first part, I was like, oh, well, the second part will be really cool then. No. When we put together the season when uh -huh, I read this, uh -huh. this, I was like, clearly misread the synopsis somewhere. But I thought it was when the planet of melancholy is getting closer, it made people all react weird and different. <gasps> they did not live in cooler! Yes! I would not recommend it to anyone. No. Not one of the best movies of the fucking decade. No Come way. on. Don't watch it. And it's like fucking nowhere now anymore anyways. Right, right. Oh, God. Why if you watching this was a chore. Not a chore, but... No, it was a chore. I had a headache. I got sick during watching this movie. Don't do it. If you want to watch a movie about depression, watch The Babadook instead. Happy Pride. Can we move on to Tree of Life? Yeah. May I say family disclosure? I think yes. You think yes? It was a problem in 2011. Okay, explain. Because maybe I'll be like, oh my god! People, like, didn't... People, like, I guess... I don't know how this was marked at a time. People were like, movie with Brad Pitt and Sean Penn. Brad Pitt's in the movie, all right. Sean Penn is present, but, like, this is not a movie about Brad Pitt and Sean Penn. No. When the history of time sequence begins... Uh-huh people walked out. They had to completely remarket the movie after it was, had been released for two weeks because people did not know what was going on. They're like, I want a different movie that's not what I thought it was. And so I'm like, man, family disclosure. If for some reason you couldn't connect, like Sean Penn was the little boy in Waco, like you were screwed. Completely different movie. But that's not, uh, I don't know if that's a Manson family disclosure. It's not the Sharon Tate murders in Charles Manson. It's not, there's no background context that I'm missing other than, it's, oh, it's not the genre you thought? If you couldn't get it, if you didn't figure it out of like... But I, I knew it was an art film. Yeah, you knew it was an art film. But no, it still don't make no sense. Oh, I liked it. I know you do. Yeah. You own it. Yeah. I don't think there's a Manson family disclosure. I think there is. Comment below. Marginalized persons. There's one shot of black hands. Mm -hmm. there's, there's like three other black extras at one point. Yeah, they like, run across the road, some black kids. Yeah, some. there's a couple of non-white people mm -hmm. in it, but like two at best. No gay stuff. There was, however, dinosaur representation. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a one. That's very fair. Now, 2022. Present. Yeah. This is another one that people are like, this is on like dozens of best of the 2010s yeah i have some issues with the story runtime ratio but i i don't know about best of the decade i can see why people definitely go back and are like wow almost all of it was practical effects mm -hmm. and they did not use light equipment what did you give it <laughs> oh for today i'm gonna give it a three okay three i'll give it a two because mm -hmm. i know film people are still aware of it but i'm not gonna think a lot more people are or if you Google like Tree of Life, um, things don't come up with this movie necessarily. Lots of people have like Tree of Life tattoos. That's not about this movie at all. It's like a spiritual thing. It's not one that people are gonna revisit for Jess or Brad or Sean. No. So 2011, I'm also gonna give it a two because I was like not very aware of this movie back in 2011. Oh. Other things overshadowed it, I guess. I, like, heard about this movie because of, like, the movie theater walkouts. And I had a friend that that happened to. They didn't walk out, but, like, it was this weird art film halfway, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what? And, like, that intrigued me. And forever I was very interested. And I was like, and mm -hmm. I just didn't think that movies like that released in theaters. It was also limited release. It released a can, and then it was limited release, like, a month later in the U.S. Budget of, like, 15 million and then it doubled the budget once it went worldwide. There was like buzz about this because people walked out. And so I'm, I'm gonna give it a three, even though like it was, I was very much on the radar of it and it released really somewhere in Pittsburgh. But um, yeah, I don't know. The art? 
I'll give the art a four. Great to look at. The performances were good. That they really didn't use lighting equipment is cool. Very interesting with the camera, but I'll give it a four. I'm gonna give it a four. The idea that so much of that like history of time sequences, like paint and and dyes and lighting and water and sand and wind, that's nuts. I think that's so cool. It was the same person that did all the special effects for 2001. And I was like, cause it, it had never occurred to me like, oh, all those old movies before computers existed had to do all of their stuff in practical. Cause I didn't go to film school and I didn't learn any of that. And that brings us to the story. Eh, 2.5. For Rizzle? Yeah, dead ass. Cause you like love this so I was just trying to be yeah. like, Oh, no, because, like, if the story is about existentialism and grief, there's better stories out there. I'll give it a two. I won't give it a one. I don't think there's any amount of context. Yeah, okay, it's an art film. Guess what? Still don't make no goddamn sense. At the end, I was trying to be like, okay, when he's on the beach with everyone, is this, like, purgatory? Is he dying? But then he's still in the elevator. He walks out of the elevator. I'm, hmm. I I'm like, I'm not an idiot. No, you're not. <laughs> so I'm like, what the fuck happened? Non-linear storytelling can be cool, but at the same time, if you can't ever connect the dots, anytime Sean Penn fucking spoke, because he also never said anything to the camera, his voiceover over something, or then he's walking in the desert, he's yeah. like, I'm just walking through the snow in a tuxedo. People when they make fun of art films are um directly par parodying this yeah i like hate myself for this because i like love to make fun of elitists mm -hmm. and like people who think they're like so artsy and cool and i really think like the weakest part of this movie was the waco texas childhood the part that was just like yep he got older that was maybe like 45 minutes of the film and if it had been 20 to 12 minutes I think this would have been a perfect runtime and an excellent piece of cinema. I really do. I don't know. I just, it opens with them in Texas and her getting a telegram that one of them died, but they all looked extremely young still. And then it's basically the sequence. Yeah. And then it's back to, or maybe it's Sean Penn for a little bit. Then it's the sequence back to Texas for mm -hmm. a long time. Yeah. Seeing Brad Pitt and... I don't know. The telegram is showing that, like, when they're kids, the middle child dies. Yes. And then later, when Sean Penn is an adult, the youngest brother dies, too. He's the only one left. Which is why, like, when they're on the beach, the middle child is there, like, a lot. And then the youngest one has, like, the burn marks up the That's back. That's a different kid. That's a different That's kid? That's a different kid. I've always thought it was supposed to be, like, the other, like, bad things at the beach. That explains also why we don't see the the nineteen year old sibling then. That maybe, I don't know. That's what I thought. We, mm -hmm. That he's the oldest. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, why would you get a telegram of your kid dying if it wasn't off in war when he's nineteen? Something does not add up to me. And that kid with the burn, there's like one shot of a house mm -hmm. on fire. That's that kid's house. Okay. I always thought that it was the middle brother dies when they're kids because of that scene of the youngest brother and Sean Penn as a child are crying in the field and then they move out of the house. The middle brother is there the whole time and they move out of the house whenever his dad has to transfer to a new plant. If you can't ever connect the dots, that's the he one. was like in the rest of the movie is what I'm saying. But I thought the rest of the movie is all like the purgatory stuff. The whole 45 minutes of being in Waco? He's no, there. No, that's at the end when they're crying in the field together. Actual, like, the child uh -huh. and then the Ready Player One kid. Yeah. That's, like, the end right before they pack up the house. And he's not there. Okay. Yeah. That's why I always thought, oh, both brothers died. But I don't understand how your child, why you would get a telegram that your child died. Maybe he was in a war. Maybe he didn't live with them. I don't know. How was he a war if he was a child? But that's when he was 19, when he's 19. that I think that's the third son. I think the third son is the one that dies when he's 19. If you can't ever connect the dots. Am I not explaining it the way that I am you're, trying to? I understand what you're saying. I don't think you're understanding how I watch the movie. If you can't ever connect the dots. 
starts off with them getting that telegram, but that, Sean Penn's, like, they're all the same age. If he's only 12, how is his brother dying from a telegram? Oh, I thought that that scene takes place in, like, the 70s or 80s, because Jess has gray hair and Brad has gray hair. They had gray hair? She had gray hair. I, like, triple looked this time, because I was like, when does this scene take place? Ever connect the dots. Because now I'm like, I swear they had gray hair, but what if they don't? If they have gray hair, does my version make sense? Yes. If they don't have gray hair, your version makes sense. And it's just confusion. <laughs> Ever connect the dots. It was really long and it's hard to sit through, but I would watch it over Hugo in a heartbeat. I'd sign, I'd pill myself. I don't know. <laughs> Boo. Both of these stink. All right, well, I don't know what we're doing next time. Oh, yes, We're I doing do. incredibly, extremely close and loud. Incre incredibly loud and extremely close? Uh, extremely Tom and incredibly Hanks. Yeah, that's how I know how to say it. And 50-50. Yeah. yeah. So stick around next time. Tell us your thoughts in the comments below. Please comment below. And if you thought these movies stank too, say it's stinky winky time in a comment. Bye. Bye. Speaking of another can story, and this is just a little anecdote. Mm -hmm. When I went in 2016, Kirsten Dunst was on my flight regarding Tony Erdman. Called it Tony Turdman. And I was just like, I'm Work walking either. to 37F now.